If God is love, what's the point of the fear of God? Well, the best example that I can give to you, I mean, we're going to go through different types of fear, right? Uh, there's the reverential awe and respect of God. It's similar to the respect that you have for your mom and dad. Um, now, I'm talking about traditional respect. Right now, there's a lot of dishonor when it comes to parents. But when the parents are doing what they're supposed to do, and they're treating you well, and they're providing, and all that they ask for in return is for you to do certain things like clean up your room, you know, do the dishes, and they're, they're doing their role appropriately and accurately. It's like a well-oiled machine to where everything is, is good. Like in the Bible, God said, in the beginning, I created everything and it was good. Everybody knew their place. Everybody knew their position, their titles, their identity. Everything was good because like, if I could put it this way, it was like a well-oiled machine that every, every mechanical movement was not trying to operate under a different movement. Where, where uh, things get disorderly, disorganized, chaotic, and um, and dysfunctional is when people try to get outside of what they were called to be and, and called to do. So, God says, honor your parents, right? Well, things get a little chaotic when you dishonor your parents, right? Now you're thwarting the fabric of what God created in the beginning. You're saying, I don't want to be a law-abiding, um, I don't want to stand under your covering. I want to create my own, my own living space, my own thing. Now, God gives a freedom to do all of that. People have free will to be atheists, agnostics, and stuff like that. But sticking to the subject, when it's a well-oiled machine is when the the son or the daughter of the parents is honoring their parents and their parents are honoring their child by training them in the way that they should go so they're not training them to be bad they're training them to be good how to be successful how to be uh, you know pro uh, prospered uh, both in health and blessing in every type of way and so here i am trying to teach you the right way in life and help you give you a boost other people don't have that benefit but here i am trying to help you and we're evil the book of proverbs put it to us like this it says evil will never leave the house of the person that repays evil for good so in other words when somebody is good to you goes and and um wants to do something that really get you out of the pit the mire the clay like and then that and then the person is getting helped repays the good with evil they set that person up for a robbery or something like that like <clears throat> they take their kindness for weakness um that right there is what i'm speaking of when i t talk about the fear of god the fear of god there's different elements to it a lot of people, their minds go to fear. When it comes to fear, it comes to dread of judgment. Um, like, um, like torment and torture and punishment and all this stuff. That's fear in a lot of people's mind. <clears throat> that's part of it, but that's not all of it. You see, as a Christian, as, uh, as we are... We automatically have embedded in our hearts, in our soul, in our spirit. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we have this element that the world doesn't have. The world blasphemes God's name in Hollywood daily. They can care less. Uh, comedians go and accept awards and then they say, uh, I heard Kathy Williams, I think she said something to the extent of, a lot of people come and thank God. And I want you to know that God had nothing to do with this. It was all me. And Jesus didn't help me a lick. And and she, she said that, like, accepting the word, right? So there's that type of, uh, you know, disrespect and that avenue, right? 
that avenue, that bitterness, that hard hit. Right? So, <clears throat> have you seen, let me ask this question. Have you seen people that have mocked God and then something bad has happened to them? I think it was, if, if it wasn't Kathy Williams, it was somebody else that she, she um, mocked God and then collapsed on the floor. She felt like she got hit on the head. It, it's a video. It was a comedian, uh, and and then she she got a concussion. Right? Um, what's the guy? What, what's his guy's name? Um, um, the he, the MMA fighter. Yeah, he broke his leg. Um, he had he he was asked the question: If you were in the ring with Jesus Christ, who do you think would win? And it was a stupid question, but he answered it arrogantly. And he said, oh, I beat up oh, Jesus Christ, man. I'll whoop on him. And such things will not be overlooked. Such things are considered blasphemy and, and this and that. Now, God could smite them. He's well within his power to smite them and wipe them off the face of the earth. But usually something happens... To where they they are met with some kind of something to let them know like don't do that don't say that don't don't think like that because if god doesn't do it the alternative is a shrug of the shoulders like you see and and the, the image in their mind is god is weak you know what do you have in this world let me ask this other question what do you um what do you have in this world from the, the LGBTQ community when it comes to God. What do you have? You have this one-sided God theory that God is love, so leave me alone. Don't judge me. And God is love. And nobody's saying that he's not. But God is love. He's loving to come and rescue you out of, a, uh, out of the wrong influence. Just like a good parent will go and warn their parents their their children and say hey don't hang around with such and such person you know they're bad influence on you i don't want you to hang around with them it's coming from a loving place and they'll warn them not just like that they'll tell them hey do this and don't do that god is in a in a loving way he's telling people hey get out of this and start stop doing this come to me i will help you in this and that now then you have spiritual warfare that wants to thwart everything. You, you heard of fake news and corrupt news, right? How they take something and they thwart it and they spit it back at the public as a misinformation type of thing. They took it, the truth, they snipped it, edited it, and then they feed it back to the public. And now it's, that's what the devil does with the things of God, you know? Um, he'll take it and he'll, he'll use it out of context. So God is love. But because God is love, is there no wrath? It, it, does that mean that there's no wrath? You know, I know that we want to think because God is love, that there is no wrath. But the fact is, is that the whole point of the cross and Jesus was that Jesus took the wrath on himself so that God wouldn't pour out the wrath on you. But if you don't have Jesus covering your sins, then the wrath still abides on you. And the book of Revelation says that. It says that those that get the mark of the beast, they will drink the cup of wrath with its full strength. And that's a scary thing to me. So what keeps you from doing that is the fear of God. You get that? Like the fear of God will get you not to choose the flesh type of way. The flesh says, the flesh gives into fear. The flesh gives into um like uh, selfishness and easiness and I'll get back to the fear part there but because we're talking about a different type of fear the fear that I'm speaking of in the book of Revelations is that, that the, the media in the end days will, will broadcast worldwide that you can't go to the store and buy and sell anymore unless you have this chip on your right hand or on your forehead you're not going to be able to just go and buy whatever you want anymore everything's going to become digital that's what the book of Revelation says so you, and given that information, if you don't get it, you're not going to be able to eat. That's pretty serious. So what, what, what's imposed on you there? Fear. It's like, dude, how am I going to live? How am I going to survive? That's where faith, trust, 
and abiding in God comes into place. Because there's so many stories in the Bible that have to do with like Elijah, you know, um, God sending a raven, you know, to, to feed Elijah when he was hungry. And there's a lot of different stories of God supplying, you know, rivers in the deserts, you know, um, uh, rocks flowing water out of it, you know, um, for Moses and uh, manna from heaven for the people to eat. So God will supply for the people that have faith and, and they don't take the mark of the beast. One way or another, God will supply for them, right? But there's going to be a lot of other people that they just feel like they have to take matters into their own hands. On, otherwise, they're going to die and this and that. And the Bible says this. It says, if he who tries to save their life will lose it. But they that lose their life for my sake will find it. So you understand there's different types of fears out there. The fear of losing your life, right? Can compel you to do something that's evil, right? Where God wants us to have faith in him more than what we have faith in our own self. When we accepted Jesus Christ, we made a transaction. The transaction was my life, I forfeit it. And I submit myself to you. Now it's yours. I give myself to you. That's the transaction that we made, right? So you should, like the Bible says, will the clay tell the potter, hey, what are you up to? What are you doing? This and that. And he said, no, of course not. The clay doesn't order the potter around. The potter tells the clay, you know, what's happening. Because he knows the end from the beginning. So a lot of this is trust and faith and love. Right? You love God, you keep his commandments, you stay in line and this and that. That doesn't mean that you're not going to make mistakes. You know, I want to confess, me myself, I'm not I'm not like um, a person that has it 100% together. I, I have my errors. I confess when I do sin, I confess it, I repent, and I get back on the horse and I keep going. That's what the Bible says. It says... A righteous man will fall down seven times, but he keeps getting back up. Now, I want to say this. The heart of the matter matters more than anything else. I want you to, to, to look within your heart and ask yourself the question of, am I manipulating God? Am I, am I using psychology on God? In other words, am I deliberately sinning only to then ask for forgiveness because I know he'll forgive me? But really, I love my sin. If that's the case, I want you to repent from that. I want you to say to God, I, I want to confess to you, Lord, that I have this mischievous heart that thinks that it could get away with this. And it thinks that if I, if I say this, I'm off the hook. It's like manipulation. And it's, it's almost like witchcraft. It's really bad. It's corrupt. God can see your heart. He can see your mind. He can see your thoughts. That automatically should invoke some kind of respect and reverential awe and, and fear of God. This word called fear, the way that it's defined in the Bible is reverential awe. It's a respect that you have for somebody that's way sovereign powerful authority figure the same way that you would respect a judge when you went to an earthly all rise you would get up you would respect if they said come forward and they called you by your name you would go forward there would be sweaty palms because you would understand the gravity of the power and the authority that they carry when they swing that gavel around you you would understand judgment is in that gavel they they can slam it on the table and say something and then somebody can take me away a deputy you know at the at at the call of this judge so there is this reverential respect that you give to this judge and you're not out of order you're not chewing gum and spitting the gum out on the, the rug and you're not playing games uh you know you will be called out. So God is grace and mercy and love because he understands he's dealing with us. We're, we're children in his sight. We're made out of dust. In some areas in, in the Bible, God says in the Bible, he's like, and then I remembered, they're just like dust. 
let me hold back because he wanted to hold us to a higher standard but then he's like that's right you know i'm dealing with mortals here with a limited time span limited knowledge limited let me i know they're disrespecting me i know that they deserve my judgment but he he controls himself he created the rainbow to remind himself not to pour out his wrath in that way again so god reminds himself okay this person is like He's he's looking at your your um your you're not infinite you're finite and so you're trying and so what God does he looks at your heart he sees is is he or is she really trying or are they or are they you know just putting on a front that's kind of where God looks at the most in terms of judgment he wants to see your heart. Because if you are remorseful for your sin, quick to forgive. But if you have this, this wicked, manipulated, like, I'll just wrap God around my finger because he is love and I can do anything I want because Jesus paid it on the cross and I don't need to, you know, I don't need to honor God in any way, love, you know, the way you honor God, respect God, and fear God, and all these words of love God is by choosing to live under his umbrella, under his covering, under his covenant, right? Like, I honor my mom, and I honor her with my deeds, not just with my lips, but my deeds. I honor her with my deeds, so if she needs money... She doesn't have to finish the sentence. If I have it, it's hers. This is the way I honor her. Um, if she needs a ride, I'm in my car, driving in her direction. I honor her with my lifestyle of showing her what she means to me. And can I fail my mom from time to time? I'm, I'm taking my mom as an example because I love my mom very much. Um... Can I feel her from time to time? I can. I'm a human being. And that's where grace comes in. Am I under the law? No. I'm not under the law. So there's going to be times when my mom's going to have to forgive me for not being quote unquote perfect, right? But there's a big difference between being illegitimate, an illegitimate son and being a son of my mom. Illegitimate is treating my mom like she's a prostitute, like she is a whore, like she has no value, like she is, um, like I just pass her around, like she is common, I'm familiar with her, I don't value her, I don't put any respect on her name, I blaspheme her name, I trample on her, I don't, I, I joke around about her. Do you see how my mom could, if that was the case, she could like cut me off? Because treating her in such a way, what inheritance do I have with my mom? What will would she leave somebody like me? Likewise, I catch myself. I see my own flaws. Somebody ministers to me and says, you're wrong, boy. You're wrong. You should not treat your mom like that. And I capture a revelation. I peep what I'm doing. And I go to my mom and I say, forgive me. I take it as far as getting on my knees and I, and I weep and I say, forgive me. I've been a terrible son. My mom, at that point, she, if, if she's anything like God, would forgive me and wash me clean and throw my sins as far as the east is from the west in the, in, like in, into a place of forgetfulness. Like, I don't even remember it. Let's start over. That's like God. But if I was on my knees... And I was asking my mom for forgiveness. And 
in my heart, I had a motive. And the motive was, I'll get back into her house just to ransack her house, to rob her. In other words, it was not real, genuine repentance. It was so that I could get back, so that I could have more of this lifestyle that I'm not done with yet. Then, at that point, I can see your heart. You're not real. You have to get to the point where you're real. And the fear of God is the guardrails to this whole walk with God. If you don't fear God, you don't have any knowledge of, of hell. That's number one. But then also of how good he is. The reason why God is um, so awesome in power. Let me see how I put this in words so that I can make it like justifiable. God is capable of terrible things, but doesn't do it. But he's capable of terrible things. Terrible, but doesn't do it. Says the Bible says he reigns on the just and on the unjust. Can you imagine if God would give everybody what they deserved? Everybody would be dead. Myself in front of the line. So God doesn't give us what we deserve. He gives us chances and grace. He extends to us an olive branch. He says, come on, you're better than that. Get back up, do better. But if you think one-sided that God is love, and that's all uh, that God is, you're going to be in this warpness of mind, saying, I'm getting the better end of the deal. God is going to be there for me, because um, he's love. And I get to live like hell in the meantime. So that person is dancing with the devil in their lifestyle. And looking over their shoulder and grinning at God saying, um, in, in so many ways, he's like, you're love. So, you know, this is cool with you because you're love. And what I try to emphasize is that God is love and there is the fear of God that balances out the scales to get people to understand that there is a right and there is a wrong. There is a good and there is a bad. There is light and there is darkness. There is heaven and then there is hell. There is, there is blessings and there is curses. And whatever you sow, you will reap. And it makes sense. So it's like God wishes that none perish and all come to repentance and have eternal life. That's his desire. But in the end of the day, God gives you that choice. But a lot of the time, love is not the compelling factor for people's conversion. The fear of God is. It compels them to live the life that honors God. Because they don't want... Um, they don't want to, first of all, disappoint God. Much less anger God. And, um, and, and be cut off. Now... When it terms, when it comes down to losing your salvation, and it comes down to being cut off and thrown into to hell because of your lifestyle, that is a topic that I I I used to think wholeheartedly that you could lose your salvation, and I used to think that our works played a role in our salvation. I used to think that. Um, we had to pitch in our 50 cents in order to be right with God, right? I used to think a lot of those things. And when I read the Bible, I can, I can give you so many verses to back up everything that I used to believe. And that's why I believed it in the first place. Because the Bible says, if a branch doesn't bear good fruit, it's cut off and thrown into the fire. If the salt loses its saltiness, what, what good is it? It's thrown on manure. And, and that's all it's good for. We are called the salt. We are called the branches, right? And there's Bible verses like this. It says, 
when I was hungry and thirsty, when I was in prison, when I was naked, you didn't give me anything to eat or drink or visit me in prison or clothe me. So he said, depart from me. But then the people that did feed and, 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 and were good to these people, but he says, when you were good to them, you were good to me. He says, now come into paradise. Come in, come in. So then it's like, whoa, right there to me, I'm thinking, dude, works matter. Um, so then also, like, there's so many different types of verses that have to do with, um, it has to do with conduct. It has to do with your lifestyle, honoring God, right? In the book of Revelations, it talks about God taking away the candlestick from churches that, that left their first love. And, um, you know, what is the candlestick? That's, that's something that we can talk about. Is it the Holy Spirit? Is what is it? Um, so then the Bible talks about like what he's looking for. There's the, there's the five talents. Then there's the, the person that was given five talents and then that person multiplied it, the two talents, that person multiplied it, the one talent, that person didn't do anything with it, hid it and gave it back to God. And that's a, a parable about a, uh, you being a Christian and doing nothing with yourself, nothing with what God gave you to do something with. And God got really mad with that person in the Bible. And he said, you wicked, lazy servant and he sent them to hell. So you read these things and you want, you, 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 you think, you know, I better get to work. But then there's other verses that say you're saved by grace and not works lest any man should boast. There's a lot of verses that that it says, you know, are you now under the law? You, didn't you just transfer over to grace? So why are you trying to why are you trying to perfect yourself under the law if you already know that we did away with that and and now you're you're on, you're on grace and you're righteous by what Jesus did and get you know so there's so many different types of verses and I'm all about grace. But where I stand is not taking grace as a license to sin. Grace is more so like to empower you to get back up if you do fall short. And grace is also um, a metaphor for you just to look more like God, right? Like grace is almost like you can never look like God. You can never be like God, but grace allows it to be so. Because he, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. He refines you. Into, but with that, you have to cooperate and walk with God in order to do that, right? Because if you don't give God your time, then you can't. And I've walked with God for 12 years now. And I'm able to tell you that if you don't do nothing with your Christian walk, it won't go anywhere. But if you do stuff to get closer to God, you start to grow and bear good fruit. And God is after good fruit. And there's verses about that too. Um, you know, going to the fig tree and not seeing any figs and then cursing the fig tree because it was in season and it wasn't bearing fruit. And and then, um, so it's so many things, so many, so many, so many verses in the Bible that talk about grace and talk about mercy and talk about forgiveness and talk about love. But then on the flip side, it talks about wrath. It talks about hell. It talks about lifestyle. It talks about honoring God. So you're going to have to do what the Bible says, which is work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's what the Bible says. Work out your life with God and make those prayers and study and show yourself approved and seek God, right? You can watch videos like this, but my recommendation is that you know God more and better than what you know preachers you hear me and you'll hear somebody else contradict what I'm saying and somebody else teach the exact same thing that I'm teaching and then somebody else teach something totally different you never heard before so don't put your eggs in the basket of people that are trying to understand themselves what the Bible means with this or that. We are all trying to, and we can miss it and we can fall short and we are repenting and we're trying and we're trying to understand and we're humans. We're flawed individuals. 
And so, like I said, I used to think that you could lose your salvation. I was 100% about that. A lot of my videos on YouTube are about that. And a lot of my videos were about works and lifestyle and honoring God. And you better, you know, do this and that. And I don't, I don't um, take it back in the sense of, I don't take it back in the sense of, I'm preaching something that's good in terms of lifestyle, not sinning. Like if I was preaching like, oh, go and sin, don't worry about it. I would repent about that. But I'm preaching righteousness. So I don't repent about preaching righteousness. But you don't, you, this is what I do repent about. You don't save yourself through your works. Your works don't save you. I repent about that. Like our works are like filthy rags to God. And I always knew this, but it was hard for me to understand because the Bible says we're supposed to evangelize. We're supposed to do so many different things. And if you have any comments on this, this is a hot topic. This is, a lot, this is something that a lot of people are trying to um, go back and forth with and understand better. And, and, and the thing is, is that nobody fully knows Nobody fully knows. Everybody has a solid opinion. But we'll find out when, you know, when we stand in judgment day. Because the Bible can be interpreted so many different ways when it talks about like the parables and that talks about living a certain type of way. Some people say, well, he was talking to the Romans there. He wasn't talking to you and this and that. And you get into this whole thing, man. So then... So, in conclusion to this video, fear of God has to do with living right because you respect Him and you love Him and you don't want to mismanage what He has already afforded you to have. So, so it's like I have been given a second chance. I have been, I have been redeemed and, and, I, and I don't want to spit in the face of the one that's, that... that um, that forgave me and have mercy on me. There's a balance. I used to fear God in an in an unbalanced type of way. I used to fear God in an unhealthy way. In the beginning of my walk with God, I feared God in in a way where it was just like if I spat on the floor, he was gonna condemn me to hell. That is unhealthy. That is not God. But I had to work out of that. I had to I had to find that out little by little. I'm not, that's not God, you know? And so you have to get to know what God means when he says different things in the Bible. But how I think of God now is he's, he's extremely forgiving and he is graceful and he, he is very patient and long-suffering with us and he means us well and he, and he wants to shepherd us. And what he's looking for from us is cooperation and participation with him. He's looking for our availability, not our, not necessarily what we bring to the table, but just our availability, our time. He does the rest, but we need to make ourselves available for him to use us. But it's not about our works in the sense of, look what I can do. Look at me. Look how smart I am. Look, look at what I can do because then it's no longer about him and now you're trying to top God in terms of being uh, your own God or something like that and that's not going to happen so that's my interpretation of the fear of God hopefully this video blesses you God bless you